Hello, my Soccer Universe, to a Conference League recap. But another loss for Lusk, another unnecessary one. We are the Santa Claus of the Conference League, as I will outline a little bit later, because we give so many points away with stupid decisions it just is not working it's really annoying and i was looking forward to this conference league season we should have had more points i think every single european match that lusk have played this season i'm thinking we could have gotten the better result it shows in what form we're currently in yeah the good days are over unfortunately and then to top that off rapid also drop points but we also had quite some exciting games, especially the ones involving Chelsea and Fiorentina. We had a shocker for Betis as well. So yeah, I would say, let's dig right in. Here's a recap of all the results from Wednesday and Thursday evening. With a 2-1 loss at Borat Banja Luka, the realistic chances for Lask of advancing in the Conference League, which actually was kind of a minimum goal, are gone. That's damning. That's damning. And honestly, you already had lost the game after seven minutes when goalie Siebenhandel was sent off because of handling the ball outside of the box after a chain of errors. First, Stojkovic doesn't put the attacker offside. Then CIS doesn't hear or see Siebenhandel coming out. He heads it back and Siebenhandel makes the reflex outside of the box to save the ball. And you're playing for more than 80 minutes with a man less. All the hopes of winning that one more or less were dashed then. Fortunately, there was not much coming from Borats either, but Lusk also didn't show much. They were the mostly defensive. Borats hit the post in the 35th minute. Schul had a mini chance, but first half, really ugly game, befitting the weather. It was raining, 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 raining. In the second half, actually, Lusk played quite well. Had some good chances and took the lead with a nicely played counter-attack where basically all our Balkan attackers go forward, the ball comes via Schul to Berisha, out to Stojkovic, back to Berisha, slight deflection, 1-0 Lask, 55th minute. And it actually looked good at that point then as well, because Flecker had another chance, there was a great free kick opportunity that unfortunately Ljubicic was offside there. I really thought that we might see this out. And then came the last 20 minutes. The biggest problem was that the bench was so weak. Who could you bring on? But you should have reacted sooner because in the last 20 minutes, everyone seemed gassed. And you needed to bring on a few defenders, but they didn't have any really on the bench. And the writing was kind of on the wall. I mean, you started to make errors. You started to give away chances. However, the way that the equalizer came, I really didn't like because it's just not picking up your player to cross in the spot of each in the near corner. And it's 1-1. One, one. Please hold out at least for a point that keeps us just about alive. But then Skorup with a drop kick from outside of the box gives Boras the win. I have a hard time saying the deserved win, but I think Boras did way more for the game than last game. But then we were playing with 10 men for over 80 minutes. What really annoys me. It's another gift to a Conference League opponent. We have been giving gifts. We're like Santa Claus. First, we gift Dure Gardens the point after having a 2-0 lead. Then against Olympia Ljubljana, yes, we were also gifting because the way that the first goal came was, again, inviting uh, Ljubljana to score. Against Serkje Bruges, the gift of not converting and here the gift of going down to 10 men. It is just not meant to be. As I said, all the realistic chances, you still have two points. You probably need eight to advance. That means you need to win at Fiorentina. Not gonna happen, unfortunately. Despite Fiorentina, the Conference League, not playing the strongest squad and overall not having the most convincing results, but they're still safely more or less onto the next round. What annoys me even more is that with this performance, you had to dig deep. You were gassed at the end and now on Sunday you have an important game in the league against Austria Vienna, which you also probably will proceed to lose. This is what really annoys me. And Boras is a team that if you play normally, this is a team you will beat easily. This is a much worse team than, for instance, even Salzburg in the current state of most of the teams in the Austrian Bundesliga. How Lusk cannot get the results this season is just beyond me in Europe. And it's damning for them. It's also damning for, for the coefficient. And yes, I have to resign to the fact that the great days in Europe for Lusk at this moment are very much over. I hope they will come again. But at the moment, it's over. 
and it hurts to say that. Let's run through the main results of the Conference League on match day four. On Wednesday we already had Bajakse here wasting a 1-0 lead through Piontek thanks to a late equalizer against Petro Kup. Similar story, Astana had a 1-0 lead against Vittoria de Guimaraes who only could equalize in the 88th minute. Vittoria still riding high in the Conference League table. Probably the most entertaining game was a 3-3 between Sally and Biavistok. Biavistok of course riding high also in the Conference League table. I think it's the first points dropped. Tech gave Sally an early lead then Palulu had a penalty saved but on the rebound he converts. However Nieto just be after the half re-established the Sally lead then Biavistok turned around Imas and Hansen 71st and 78 and then Diagush on goal gives Sally an equalizer overall probably a fair result but that was a crazy game overall. Then we had Serke getting a 2-0 home win against Hearts. The weird thing is that they have the same stadium as Club Bruges and the fans are in the same section. That is really, really odd, but hey. So beat Copenhagen get also a 2-1 away win at Dynamo Minsk in an empty stadium. The highlight game of the evening was probably Heidenheim taking on Chelsea who wanted to send Chelsea home and complete Brexit. Well they sent them home but with all the points as well. This was a relatively open game. Chelsea probably had the better chances. They were playing also a more or less second string lineup which is kind of damning when Heidenheim go fully in but both teams had chances. This was a wide open game rather entertaining but at the beginning of the second half Sancho finds Nkunku makes it 1-0. Wanna had a big chance to get the equalizer. Heidenheim also had two offside goals and very late on Mudrik with an absolutely dry shot into the roof of the net. Gives Chelsea the win and all the three points. They are still perfect and they're playing and toying with this conference league overall. Apoel get a 1-0 shock win at Molde and then Noah and Vikingur only play out a 0-0 draw. Palatinaikos also big win for them. The first of the campaign beating HJK Helsinki 1-0 thanks to an own goal but over fully deservedly so. St. Gallen were largely outplayed by TSC. They had a CC lead however Pantovic turns the game around but just a few minutes later in the 65th minute Konle Konietzka could get an equalizer for the Swiss side who hold then on to the point. Dürgarden get a 1-0 away win at the New Saints. Then Fiorentina 3, Pafos 2 sounds much closer than it was. Fiorentina actually had already a 2-0 lead early in the second half. Kouame seemingly got the second goal, but the second goal was in fact an own goal. Then Jairo pulls on back in the 68th minute before Martinez Quarta re-establishes two goal lead just a few minutes after. And then very late on, it's an absolute horrible show by Terraciano who gives the ball away to Jaja, who then can put it into the empty net. Lugano get their first ever win against Belgian opposition with a 2-0 over Ghent. Then the shock of the evening when Betis lost 2-1 at Mlada Boleslav despite having the lead through Los Elves in the 17th minute. I think it was a nice free kick. However, right after have they twice concede the absolute same goal to Wojta and Vidra where the defense is completely unsorted and they can just tap it in into a more or less empty net. And to top it all off, Los Elves was even sent off with a red card. Betis not being good in Europe again. Ljubljana win at home against Against Larne fully deserved so it needed time for them to break it down. Lege second in the table still perfect the only team outside of Chelsea to be that and it's a very convincing 3-0 win at Omonia. And lastly Rapid's perfect streak is over. A disappointing 1-1 draw at home to Shamrock Rovers. They hit the woodwork three times well after one of those at least they get and the go-ahead goal in the ninth minute to Zvetkovic. They had so many chances especially in the first 20-20 minutes they probably should have taken a bigger lead than just the one goal lead. They then thought they'd get a penalty which correctly was not called off and with the first attack and the first shot on goal Hunahan can put the cross in and Kenny gets equalized in the 55th and Rapid cannot find the go ahead goal. There were a few chances however it also as we said that Kenny twice once hits the post and once almost but the goalie was there. So yeah in the end you have to be lucky to not lose this one and you're still riding high on the table but definitely points drop. I'll keep on saying the Austrian teams need to make points so not picking up wins after leading for both Lask and Rapid is rather damning. Let's briefly have a look at the standings. I mean, on the top is Chelsea, but also Legia, and then behind it, Jagiellonia, Bialystok. So the Polish teams performing really, really well in Europe, which is maybe on one side surprising. On the other side, I think the Polish league is much undervalued. Rapid drop now to fourth place, still looking good as to Vittoria and Fiorentina, who are also more or less through. I think Chelsea and Legia already fixed qualified for the knockout stage. Heidenheim with, with that loss have now fallen off, but you know, 
I still would think they could get a top eight spot. Now we have to go a lot further down. I mean, to top the bottom half, we see Copenhagen. That's a team that was in the Champions League quarter final in the past season. Bet is only in 22nd, it's still out. And then we have to go even further to see Lusk in 32nd with only a very slim chance, 12% chance of advancing. Yeah, you have a pretty tough away game coming up and then a home game that is also anything but a foregone conclusion because we can go uh, in the top half of the table. But let's look at the expected standings to kind of sort it all out as well and you see already I mean in the top eight we have Ch Chelsea and two Polish teams Rapid, Fiorentina, Vittoria, Heidenheim and Lugano also in there so Ljubljana is probably not gonna make it into the top eight at least this is the way it looks at this very moment. I'm also losing for instance at Vikingur the Icelandic champion in 16th probably advancing I think this would be the first Icelandic team that moves on in the European competition. 19th Betis. Betis have a serious chance of not qualifying for the knockout stage. Same thing as Patanaikos and Copenhagen, which are two teams that I actually would have expected to move in there. And yeah, we see in 30th spot Lask. I think they're gonna get more falling than the rising. Naturally Lask have also fallen out of the ranking of the favorites. It's still Chelsea's competition to win. I think they can win this at a canter. It also will a little bit uh, depend on well, how the seeding and the bracket will turn out. Fiorentina second and Bet is still in there. Well, given their strength, they probably should, but it just looks weird that Betis might not actually make it into the knockout round. We see Rapid in 7th, we see Heidenheim in 4th, those are outsiders that could run deep. Lege at the moment only in 8th, but I actually could see a Polish team making a semi-final again. So here are the upcoming matches in roughly two weeks time. We have Chelsea going all the way to Kazakhstan to Astana. Interesting uh, trip for sure. Should get at least a point. Last have to go to Fiorentina. Not looking forward to that one at all. It should be a celebration, but you know, now you need to get something out of this game. Just not fun. Rapid have to go to Cyprus against Omonia. We have Real Betis going to Petrokub in Moldova. They need to get a win there. Heidenheim at Bajakshi here is probably another game that we have to look out for. Legia against Lugano, those are two teams that are in the top half of the table. And Mlada Boleslav host Jagiellonia. This is a game that I would not have guessed would be a big game when this competition started. Okay, Bleh. Conference League. Bye. As I said, I had such high hopes. It's done. It's done. It's done. It does it. But other than that, what can I tell you? I think this competition seems a little bit weird because, you know, you have only two argue with three really big names in there and especially Chelsea will toy with this one on the other side it is a competition for the smaller teams in Europe and that's great. Let me know your thoughts on the Conference League round and the Conference League in general. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!